I go on YouTube, you know what them say you now. As one gone, one born. I just Monday, the local capital market knock out the IPO. And by Wednesday, another one job. Yes, people. Edio Focal Prospectus is here. And Blue Color Finance is about to dig into the prospectus. So if you're not subscribers yet, just hit the subscribe button, like the video, share the content. So forward. Okay, people, let's see how fast we can get through this one. All right, because it's a huge document. 127 pages a, a very long read so here we go eddie eddie focal making learning fun and that seems to be a good value proposition there by the company as you know a lot of people do not go to school because they think learning or the education getting an education is a bit boring there's no fun in it sit down and study books and them something there so the company is saying that it makes learning fun all right so the company is a fully bred jamaican company located 27b ola um whole hope road kingston 10 and that's the telephone number of the company the contact number of the company you have there along with the website of the company www.ediofocal.com so you can visit the website of the company so see if you can get a deeper understanding of what the company offers and the different products that the company has all right so here you have mayberry investment limited all right and mayberry investment limited seems to be the lead broker of this prospectus and what that means is that Mayberry is the one that helps put this huge document together all right and the lead broker normally the lead broker normally invites other brokers to help them sell the shares all right so Mayberry is responsible for selling the shares to John Public. But what I'm normally do is to ask other brokers to help with the unloading of the shares. Alright, so here you have a quick summary of the a quick summary of the invitation. So the company is issuing up to 129,689,219 million six hundred and eighty-nine thousand two hundred and nineteen ordinary shares of that amount 80 million four hundred and ninety nine thousand two hundred and seventy two ordinary shares will go to john public what i'm called the general public and non-reserve shares all right and a portion of the shares will be reserved and that portion is forty nine million one hundred and eighty nine thousand 947 all right that will go to the reserve pool and what we find here is that the the non-reserve share seems to be twice as large as the reserve share which seems to be good but overall it's a very small offer just 129 million dollars a very very small offer which 80 million will come from the public or 62 percent of that amount whereas 38 percent is reserved for key strategic partners and lenders option so the lenders option is really a loan that some person had lent to the company and they are just turning that into shares all right so it's a very small offer and we suspect that this one will go as fast as it comes so if you're interested if you're interested 
I think you should get at it as fast as possible. All right. So before we get into too much detail of this prospectus, let us first do a simple overview of the company. All right. Because most people are really interested in the stock price and whether or not the stock is a buyer or a hole or whatever. All right. And knows nothing about the, the, the company itself. So what is Ediofocal? All right. All right, so Edifocal, the company. I hope you're seeing, seeing, seeing the screen. So Edifocal is a fully bred Jamaican company that uses, um, that, that, that tries to add technology to education. All right. And as I said before, it's located in Kingston. Um... The principal activity of the company is to provide innovative social learning platform that combines study with play. And normally them say, if you, if you want to know a good entrepreneur or a good company, or if you want to be a good entrepreneur that creates a good company, just look for some issues that society has and try and solve those issues. And now we see where any focal He's trying to use one stone to kill two birds. Seeing? Because if you know anything about the education system locally, um, it is always said that it needs to add more technology. Right? It is quite inefficient because of the lack of technology. So here we see where this company is combining technology with education. So that's an issue there that the company is trying to solve and another issue that 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 society has is people see education as being boring you know what i mean a one can sit down and read a book for a minute attention span short so here you see where the company is trying to solve that problem also and it's saying it wants to Combine study with play. And as I know that the company value proposition is to make learning fun. Alright. So the company is really after something just by looking at what they're about and what they are trying to solve. Alright, so the history of the company. The company was conceptualized in 2040 um 2010 all right and what by swaby the guy named is swaby who first thought about starting up the company and it got manifested in march 2012 all right so they started operating two years after the idea first came to him the initial focus of the company was to do exam preparation aimed at the GSAT students and the CSEC students. And now you know they replaced GSAT with, with PREP. Um, so that was the main focus. They normally allowed the GSAT students to prepare for the GSAT exam through offering them past papers, learning, learning material. All right. So what the company does, I, I, I should mention is to create content, All right? So they are a content creator and then they are the software where they stream the content to, to students wherever they, they are, as long as they are connected. All right, so that's what the company really does. All right, so we we'll look at how the company has evolved over the years. Okay, we we'll see where the company has evolved somewhat. The company has evolved from offering just exam preparation material to now offering full curriculum material. 
all right and also it seems the company is not offering its service to the c -sec section of the of the education system anymore i'm not seeing where they say anything about that but it still it still offers its service or its service is still geared at the the pep level students that's the grade six as you know it all right so the company has two business segment one learning all right and this is where the company do what they call the b to c that's the business to customer all right so here's really where the company offer its service to students all right and that's people who want to learn and the company is planning on doing to 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 go beyond just the school system to start offering like finance education and those types of things all right so it seems that the company wants to branch off in the in the fintech business all right the business section is what the company recently start i guess that was started sometime in 2021 or thereabout but it's where the it, it deals with business it's, it offers its service to businesses right so you might have business that wants to teach their employee new processes or to educate them on, on, on safety or whatever now the company develops software where its platform can be used for that purpose all right so the this is how the company is evolving and continues to evolve as it grows and seek new markets Okay, um, let us go to some of the achievement that the company has experienced since a couple of years since the company be, has, has been around. It's a very young company, as you know. Has been around for about 10 years. All right, so in the, in the, in the space of things, that's a very young company. It's a startup company. So the company state that it offers its service to over one hundred thousand parents to assist their children with gsat and prep examination prep them for 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 the grade six examination i think them change it from gsat to to prep or pip all right so i guess this one hundred thousand one hundred thousand parent or customer is an achievement to to the the, the firm and you cannot talk about achievement for a young company and not talk about how the company has grown over over the years all right so it is said that the company has seen in the last three years the fastest growth all right and when we look at the the compounded average growth rate for the last five years the company has grown over 400 percent and when we talk about compounded average, it would have meant that the company, you could say that the company grow 400% every year for five years. And that's it really mean. Even though the, grow, the growth might vary. But if you average out everything, you can say that the company grow every year at 4%. And when we look at the last three years, the company grow 100% on a compounded average growth rate these are some exceptional numbers all right so the company is really doing good and over the last year 2021 over 2022 the company grew revenue of 64 percent using just preliminary data so these, these data are not audited but this growth might seem to be tapering but what you must realize is that the, the company saw exceptional growth in 2020 
given the COVID phenomenon, right? And most people went online. Schools also went online. So the company saw optic or great growth in the use of his platform. So now 2021, after COVID had eased somewhat and school started, it face to face or face to face has resumed. This growth of 64% over what 2020 was is something, is some achievement. All right. So that's that that's looking good for the company. So let us look at this hour that the company Holland IQ, Holland IQ. All right. So this company has ranked Eddie Focal as one of the top companies that um, in this sector. Right. So it is within 100 the top 100 in the caribbean and latin america all right so to come in in the top 100 of company in the sector throughout the caribbean and, the, and latin america is not an it's not a simple achievement for a young company all right so who is this Olan iq says a globally recognized company that does research in this sector right so it does research on firms within the sector all right all over the globe all right and it it helps it it i guess it it offers assistance to those company mostly it's it its research is done within the education sector because it has a mission of wanting to transform the education sector using intelligence data driven intelligence all right so that is quite some achievement for Eddie Focal being in the top 100 of these types of firm in the Caribbean. And this will augur well for the company as the company plan to expand overseas into the Caribbean also. So the company will have something to wrap back on when it try to penetrate the market there. All right, so let us continue with the summary of the invitation. All right, so we're currently looking at the, the prospectus section five, and this is telling you how to apply for the shares. Let me see, let me bring that up. All right, so what's here now? Let me see. All right, so the according to, you need to apply according to the, application guideline set out in appendix one so i guess in appendix one that's the last part of the prospectus you can check that out for yourself just look at appendix one and it and it shows you how to apply i guess it will show you the application form what you need to fill out sometimes they ask for your brokerage number that that each broker has a number all right so you need to fill that out your id your trn and those types of thing those are pertinent information so you can go down to the appendix and get information as to how to apply for these shares if you are interested if you're really interested in the shares them all right so again a swift a brief summary of the offer is that the issuer is edio focal limited and the security the amount of security they are issuing is 129 million six hundred and eighty nine thousand two hundred and nineteen ordinary shares and each year's uh, will be at one dollar that is including the reserve shares so nobody will get a discount nobody will be paying a premium everybody pays one dollar per share that sound good if the share is at a good price all right so the reserve shares 
they will reserve 49,189,947 ordinary shares with what they call them reserve pool and the reserve pool consists of two sections all right the first section is the key strategic partners and me read right through the prospectus and me never say who are these key strategic partners but i love to know who so you know who you're investing alongside that's very important and lender option all right so the lender option really is somebody lend some company lend the company some money and the company has said, all right, instead of me paying you back the money, you know what you do? Just hold some ordinary shares. Changing from loan to ordinary shares in a good company is always a bargain. So I suspect, me I suspect that this company, I don't remember the company name, but as we go through the prospectus, you're going to see the company name. We are gonna sit it. I write it down somewhere, you know. Yeah, but I suspect him are gonna take up the shares because it's always a bargain to to all equity instead of debt in a good growing company. I will see where this company is growing at some exponential rate. I hope these types of growth continue. Non-reserve shares, meaning John Public. These are the shares where me and you now can tap into and buy a part of $80 million, ordinary shares. Alright. So here we see where the general public are get more shares, almost twice as much as what is reserved which is a good look again so it seems like they must all right another one here we're gonna try again the public it's very small still just 80 million dollar not a lot so it's not a lot of money them are look to pick up all right so let us look at the dates and them talk, them say these are key dates where you need to pay attention to the prospectus was registered 20, um, the 21st of February 2022 all right and it registered with the company office of Jamaica so you have to go to the company office and make them know say you are going to issue some shares to the general public and to whomever else you also need to register with the FSC the Financial Service Commission these are the watchdog of the financial sector so you have to make them know where you up to talk. So the 23rd, 2022, them register the prospectus with the FSC. Publication of prospectus, the prospectus came about 22nd, 2022 it job. Jamaica Stock Exchange site, get that. And we don't pan it, the 2025th, we there are review it. All right. Opening date by March. The third, 2022, is when them say you can start buy the, the, the thing, but don't be confused, you know. Opening date, you need to start putting an application long before the opening date so you can get it when it's open because them something normally open and close in the same day or even minutes after. Because what normally happens is that people start putting them application from now. You know the first come first serve something there. So you can't wait until the opening date. I mark you, you know. February is a short year. 28 days in that area. So tomorrow, you just have tomorrow. Then you have the weekend. And then Monday again. And Monday it will open. Check your calendar, man. But you need to get at it. And them said the closing date will be March 17. But it's left up to the company. So the company have a lot of discretion as to when it, it close. So them said they can close it when they feel. As soon as they pick up, they have a minimum amount where them say if the company pick up the minimum amount, 
He can close it anytime he feel. And he can extend it beyond March 17 if he feel. So there's a lot of discretion on the company's part there. Alright. So those dates you need to look out to. Remember, February is a short month. So you need to do what you have to do. Now let us quickly look at, look at some of the key partnerships of the company farm so as to stave off some of the competition what the company might face in the future or presently. The company really operates in an industry or a sector that is fast changing because you know technology, them things that change like as a quint, a new something come out. Somebody find something new will work better than the old. So technological products become obsolete very fast. All right. And there's no official data, but I suspect there are a couple of people playing in the same industry because this platform, this learning platform that the company offer, you have a couple of people that does the same. Even the government itself, the Ministry of Education has a platform through which it does the same teaching through, through distant learning. All right. So the company claimed that since the COVID, I know that the government is trying to put back children in school. There is a difference in strategy. So, them have one thing what them call the blended learning strategy now, where students go to school like two times a, a week and spend the next three days at home and learn from the computer. So, the company claim it's in a partnership with the government in designing or developing or um, rolling out that strategy. All right. So, the government, the Ministry of Education, job and the company to help it roll out across the island this blended learning strategy how best to deliver it, all right? So I guess the government wants some expertise from, from the company. And in terms of its, it, it, its content, content creation, and the company will benefit from this also because the company will now be able to streamline its content creation to make it more mirror the requirements of the government, all right? Company also state that it has it has a good relationship with some private companies. And you know, as I said, the company have plan to go to expand in the business, the B2B sector where it offers its services to businesses. So the company are really bank on, on these relationships to, to keep away the competition from enclosing on it. Alright? All right, so our next stop on the prospectus would be the chair, um, the chairman's letter. So let us just scroll down to where the chair's, chairman's letter is. All right, so here the chairman is Mr. Peter Levy, chairman of the board of directors. All right, so within this letter, what, what jumped out at me is the fact that the chairman claims that his interests would be aligned with minority shareholder all right so the chairman owns 7.76 percent of the company and because of that now he's he's claiming that he has similar interests but i don't think the chairman really understand what it means to have um a small amount of the company without having a say on the board of directors Right, so having 7.76% of the company would not amount to your interest being in alignment with minority shareholders' interests. All right, because you are now one of the big dogs on the board, are in terms of ownership of the company. However, we are seeing where the chairman has put in place some measures that will protect shareholders' interests. So for that, we are grateful 
and when I talk about your interest being aligned with shareholders, we are gonna judge that based on your performance and nothing else. You get me? So so far, let me just yes. So the chairman claimed that the company has entered into what them call a service agreement with Mr. Swaby, that is the CEO, and Mr. Hallen. All right, these are the co-founder of the company, which ties them both to the company. So as we get down into what we call the risk aspect of the company, you will see where the company has what I'm called personal risk. That is the company profitability or the company um, survival is highly dependent on certain personnel being a part of the company such like such as these two gentlemen because they have the expertise and the know-how so without them the company future would look bleak all right so the chairman is saying look him enter into an agreement have them sign an agreement that forces them to stay with the company and can't bail out as them please all right and the agreement also deals with the remuneration of of these two men what i would um what i would have loved to see though is that agreement in the appendix they should have put that in the appendix so investors could get to read and know exactly what is in that document all right now the, the chairman went on to state that as the population grows there will be more need for company like like this one that offers technological solution to education and as the 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 the, the world becomes more digitally savvy information driven companies will start play a bigger role in in society all right i see where the chairman even warns against the company the company are one against expecting the company to grow in a linear fashion uh where is that now but basically he's saying that the, the 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 revenue and the the profit ability of the company will not be a linear year to year smooth growth so you will have some volatility going forward so you need to look out for that i remember you're investing in a young company and that is one of the uh, that is just the nature of these young companies so this chief executive officer letter deals with what we went through like the conceptualization of the company how the company came about um what are some what what what, what the nature of the company then all right so this brother that you're looking at is a founder and he is currently the ceo All right, so the next section we'll want to look at is the use of proceeds. So when them get people money, what am I going to do with it? And by the way, so this is section 10. All right, so this deals with the use of proceeds. So let me just zoom in on this section. Oh, God. All right, so first thing that jumped out is that the company... If the company the company can decide to close the offer as long as it raises 100 million dollars so the million the million minimum 100 million minimum and the company can decide to close the offer and is able or qualified to list on the jamaica stock exchange with that amount all right um another thing that is important the company is issuing 129 million shares 
at one dollar per share however the company will not get 129 million dollars 13 million dollar of that is loan or 13 million shares represents loan that the company had received some some time ago so the company has already started using that money all right so of the 129 million dollar that we are talking about the company will only get 100 and about 60 million dollar of cash so instead of paying back that man that company the loan the company just decide or may decide to just take equity stake all right to the tune of about 13 million shares all right, so the net proceed after paying the bills, the lawyer bill, the accountant bill for come uh, the, 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 the financial statement, um, paying the lead broker, whomever, then whatever is left, uh, left of that, the company plans to use that to pay off some short-term loan that is causing some stress on the company's financials. So the company have up to... 27 million dollar in short-term loan that it needs to pay off immediately all right and if you look at the financial the company has no working capital or very low working capital so the company need this money to pay off the short-term loan all right so outside of that now the company plans to do some expansion all right so the company said the, the the other portion of the money will use to do expansion and in expanding the company plans to improve its platform efficiency all right so it wants to make its plat its platform more efficient by developing a range of quality new product and features and one thing that you must notice about a technology company the products become obsolete very fast like you have a good product this month and by next month a new product come with just one little feature extra then just tweak the feature and then the first product become obsolete and it just seems old and nobody now want to use it again that is the environment in which this company operates so this company will always be in need of cash so it can do the research and improve its system and keep adding new features all right so the company say more money for do that and also the company are planning to expand to north america and you know that is the home of the silicon valley where a lot of money is pumped into r and d where a lot of research is done so the company are planning to compete with the big dogs them can this company manage with such small funding this company seems like it will go on far more money than just the 116 million dollar where it will get now or maybe them just chew this not the prospectus forget just get investors excited because this little money i can expand into north america where which is the home of silicon valley may not believe this so anyways that's the use of the funds all right and we see where the master 12 million dollar of that will be um the fees which is the broker fee the liar fee the legal fee the auditing fee register fee approximately 22 million dollar i mean approximately 42 million dollar will be used towards the repayment of short-term loan all right so it's even far greater than what me they think they think a 27 million dollar and so far 42 million dollar will go towards short-term loan and then the other 62 million dollar will be used towards expansion so that even create a more dire um outlook in terms of the company wanting to expand into north america all right So let us just scroll on to what most investors or young investors are looking out for.
the dividends or the dividend policy of the company all right so most people invest for dividend all right so in that section we are look we're looking at what they call a material indebtedness before we move on to um, dividend we're seeing where the company has debt for two one two three companies roots financial group the company wore roots financial group some 50 million dollars and it's paying an interest rate of 8.5 percent per annum all right and this is the, the the company that will instead of the instead of any focal repay this debt they are offering this company some shares all right so the company can redeem some amount of this debt using shares all right up to 13 million dollars worth of shares so we see where the company or ncb and this debt is just a small sum of money eight hundred and one thousand dollars at ten percent and it is a secured loan and also jmb at 25 million dollar at nine percent which is a lower percentage rate than the ncb loan but the jmb loan is guaranteed by personal or there are some personal guarantee there so it's less risky than the ncb loan hence the lower interest rate even though the loan has a longer maturity date all right so let's move down to the company's dividend policy and here the company is saying it will pay let me just zoom in on that it's targeting a payout not exceeding 20 percent of net profit after tax all right so that's the dividend the company wants to pay however that payout ratio is subject to the company's reinvestment needs including investment in platform and the ability of sufficient distributable resources um, reserves for each financial year all right so the company is saying it's, it is willing to target a 25% dividend rate. However, that is subject to its need to invest in its platform and, and develop other products. Now, given the fact that this company is a young company and a company that is in um, expansion mode and growth mode, I don't see this company and the fact that the, 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 the products that this company have our, our deals in um, becomes obsolete real fast right so there will always be need for R&D and always be need for innovation and, and, and the company putting money in um, producing or developing new product I don't see this company paying out any dividend anytime soon until the company has reached an economy of scale where it has become extremely profitable all right so it says the company reserves the right to revise this dividend policy as needs arise all right so investors dividend investors need to keep that in mind all right so let's look at the risk factors all right of this company and here in the prospectus there is a warning that no investor should invest in this company unless you have fully considered the risk factors therein all right so what we want to see in this section of the prospectus is some company specific risk as again some generic risk and when i say generic i mean general risk that all companies or most companies are exposed to all right we want to see some some risk that is company related all right so number one there is a risk of 
or risk related to data collection act so this is this new law or the law that it has been around but it has been revised and is being enforced even more so now given the fact that a lot of companies are operating in this data um, space where they collect data store data process personal data all right so what do they do with the, these data after they collect them all right so that can lead to personal some personal issue so the law is out to protect people and people's personal information so edio focal collects process tours use personal information from parents and students so it will be subjected to this law and this law is currently being tested in the court as a, as as a document as the prospector state so there is no specific guide as to how this law will affect the company all right so this law is not fully developed as yet so this is a risk that you're taking as an investor that this law might cost the company excess amount that will run the company profitability or that will impact greatly on the company's profitability all right so one of the things we want to look at too is to ensure that the company has qualified personnel on its board that can assess these risks associated with these laws and assist the company on how best to navigate these laws all right so that's one of the things we will look out for when we are looking at the company's directors our board of directors law related to intellectual property as you know the company is a content creator the company develops software and other um products so the company owns the content and owns the product that it develops however what the company is saying is that jamaica's property our intellectual property law is not fully developed all right so jamaica's copyright law do not require registration and as a result of that the company will have to take some responsibility or some action on its own all right so in order to prevent people from or other companies from infringing on the company's property intellectual property right the company will have to bear some expenditure and set up a surveillance system to ensure that people are not using its intellectual property so that will affect the company expense also so these laws are hitting right at the company's expense all right so it is hitting the company where it's hurt where it hurts most in its pocket all right so risk related to cyber security this one is very important and it is more so given the fact that cryptocurrency is becoming more accessible or acceptable all right and it is just the other day you know i was able to see this this article in the sunday gleaner hackers whole ncu ransom so admin accounting processes compromise tech expert warns of growing attacks all right so cyber attack has become very rampant and we see where ncu has succumbed to that and the fact that cryptocurrency is is is, is now growing rapidly and is being accepted in, in in a lot of countries this is where cyber attack has increased in proportion all right because most of these attackers are asking for 
to be paid in crypto because you cannot trace the the movements of crypto all right all right so those are, are some important risk that you assume when investing in this company all right and here again this is another important one the changes in technology and again as i mentioned before technological products become obsolete real real fast right so operating in this space or investing in companies that operate in the technology space you might succumb to being in a company that is no longer relevant all right so that is something and and here the company is stating that the prospectus is stating that the how they mitigate against these risks is to ensure that the ceo and the cto keep up to um, keep abreast or up to date of the technological development all right in in the industry and are members of key ed tech industries so they join the industry they know what's happening they know what's coming before it comes so they can strategize and lead the company in that direction all right so covid was a risk so even though we saw where the company benefited from covid in terms of a lot of people start streaming online and school went from face to face to being online the risk that was associated with this are the companies that a lot of persons were unable to pay the company and as a company seeks to go b to b that is to do more business with businesses right a lot of those businesses were unable to pay what is owed to the company so we see where the company receivables as soared in 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 2020 all right so these are some risks that you should pay attention to as an investor and the 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 other risks are very very general risk you can go through them for yourself all right and see what's happening All right, so our last section of the prospectus that we will look at is, uh, is section 13 that deals with the board of directors, senior management, and their interest in the company. Um, a lot of people would not um, consider looking at this part of the prospectus, but it can give some information that ties to the other section of the prospectus remember one thing that was said we want to see whether or not the person that is working as a lawyer if there's a lawyer on the board if there's a a proper mix of the different expertise right but given the fact that this company is faced with these unique risks we want people that can deal with those with that or that has the expertise to deal with those risks so one of the things that jumped out at us is the fact that the chairman is not the ceo they call that duality so when there's a duality of of that role the chairman being the ceo then you can expect the company to to, to run in a one-man favor perspective you know what i mean all right so there is no duality of the chairman's role as he's separate and apart from the ceo so you can have some amount of oversight from that perspective grace lindo is an independent director and she's a non-executive di uh, executive director we see where she's a lawyer on the board so it is i'm very interested in her expertise and here she deals with commercial and intellectual property remember we talk about inter intellectual property in the risk 
or is a majorist to our company well we have a lawyer that deals in that um in that area all right so lindo um practice covers intellectual property technology and technology transaction right up our ball field right so she's in technology e-commerce trade regulatory matters cyber security data protection so these are the issues that she deal with so she's a good pick to deal with some of the issues that the company faces so that's a plus for the company in terms of um, its directors and the expertise that these people have now when you look at the the amount of independent directors directors it is always good to see how many of the directors are independent so we have grace lindo as one independent director and non-executive she does not work for the company that is one of three and now we have shana fuller um, an independent director also that is two of three so that's good kevin donald um, donaldson also an independent director um three three to three so it's a 50 percent independent directorship we're having um we're looking at here but i'm questioning whether or not kevin is an independent director all right so kevin is a he deals in the financial industry you have over 17 years of um experience in that industry so you need people like these on the board all right administration um distinction in in biz administration from mona all right but this is what is a problem with me with kevin kevin is also a co-founder and director of roots all right of roots group financial group limited this is a company that um is given the offer to transfer its credit to ordinary shares all right so I'm seeing Kevin as the possibility of having a conflict of interest because no Kevin owns shares, right? Or Kevin is associated with a with a company that is doing business with Elio Focal. So that would disqualify Kevin from being an independent director. So we are back to two out of six people being independent director all right um that's one third and lloyd swaby and um executive all right so i guess in terms of governance and having somebody to look out for you as a minority shareholder then that wouldn't be the 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 first and foremost issue that these director the, these director as a group would would have in mind all right because it's a small handful of people who are independent directors on the board and here we are looking at senior management all right and most of these management have technological background all right so you can go through this for yourself though it's a good read to get to know the people who you are investing your money with because these are the people that will control your money all right so this is it for now in another video I promise I will be doing the financial statement and I will be looking at the valuation of the company and that video will come out tomorrow so you can look out for that all right so until next time just subscribe share and like the content and we will talk next time all right Cool.